relationship on the rocks? Crushing on your best friend. Not sure how to tell your partner a secret? Luckily, you found Dear Romance Writer, an advice podcast from people who write happily ever afters for a living. We are Zio Axelrod, Avery Flynn, and Roan Parrish. You have questions. And we have questionable answers. Let's get to it. Our first letter this episode is from Lost and Confused, but hoping to find her own cinnamon roll soon. <laughs> I love. Are you going to read it to us? <laughs> read it to us. I don't know. Please. I could, I guess. <laughs> All right. Yes. Give us the letter. Tell okay. us more. Dear romance writer, if I were the main character in my favorite Regency romances, I'd be the upper 20s spinster who sweeps the to-be-reformed rake off his feet with her intelligence, kindness, and take-no-shit attitude. Alas, my life is not a Regency romance. Yet. <laughs> I've spent my 20s kicking ass and taking names, and lately I've been thinking it would be fun to find someone to be awesome with. So naturally, I'm lost and terrified. How does someone go about finding someone and making a move if they don't make a move? Should I sign up for an online dating profile, even though it sounds exhausting? Eek, can you help? Oh, oh my God. Well, yeah, and to have to do that during a pandemic when we're all in. I was just thinking I mean, that, like. It's super easy to meet people nowadays. <laughs> Poor thing. Wow. Uh, okay. Being somebody who has not dated in a million and years and like two decades. Um, Here's what I would say from my old lady post. Uh, and that would be number one, it's really hard right now because you're in a pandemic. So don't feel this incredible, don't don't add the amount of pressure to yourself that you're probably already feeling. Mm, yeah. <laughs> so number one, give yourself a break. Give yourself a break. You do not need to stress out about one more thing. Um, so that would be number one. Now, it is really fun that you've gotten to a point in, in your life when you can, you know, when you, not that just that you can, but that you want to involve somebody else. That's awesome. That's fun. Um, you know, and I would say, you know, try volunteering. There is still volunteering going on. Mm -hmm. um, so anything you can do to kind of expand your circle a little bit from you and your five dogs and your cats, that would be good. And it's me with the five dogs. I hope you don't have five dogs. It's insanity. Um, but so, you know, any kind of volunteering you can do, um, online book clubs, Regency Reader, uh, you might branch out just a little bit beyond romance, um, or you might stay with romance, but find something like that. Again, it's about expanding sort of your, your circle that you see every day. And the online dating stuff, um, oh my God, the cesspool stories I hear from that are insane, <laughs> but, you know, I think if you go in without like super expectations that it has, that your online dating experience has to be this way or that way, um, but give yourself some fl flexibility with that, it, it may be worth a try. So that's the old lady advice. <laughs> What do you think young whippersnappers? <laughs> I haven't, I haven't dated in a minute either, but like, I think, <laughs> especially right now, um, there are so many things happening online virtually. There's like you said, book clubs, there's also cooking classes. Oh, there's yeah. like all kinds of stuff happening. There's just meeting meetups of like every genre and interest and everything, you know, there's ways to meet people. I mean, people used to go to the library or the supermarket or the gym or whatever but like you can we still kind of do that. you know like yeah. yeah like you still kind of can kind of, kind of do that now and it's even better because you get like a more one-on-one -on -one, you know access to someone rather than trying to like anyway but you know what I mean but yeah, yeah. It's, it's tough right now I, I can't even imagine trying to find someone during a pandemic but my goodness and yeah I think the online dating, I mean, I met Mr. X online, but not through a dating thing. It was actually through a class. So there you go. It works. Um, it works. It works. But um, I think- Keep if you the go cat, Ron. 
Yeah, <laughs> the cat's gonna stay there. Okay, for those of you who are who are listening only, Roan's cat has made an appearance and she's super pretty and fluffy and white and we insist that she stay. So sorry to interrupt, Zio, keep going. That's okay. I was just gonna say like, go if you go into the online dating thing, just know what your goal is. Um, and like Avery said, don't be too hard on yourself. Like, if yes, you wanna find someone for the long term, but also don't be afraid to have fun in the short term. You know, just meet someone just to, you might just end up being friends. Like don't put so much pressure on yourself that like, if the person you meet isn't the one, you're like freaking out. Do you know what I mean? Like give yourself some some leeway. Um, what do you think, Rowan? <laughs> yeah, I, I agree with both of you. Um, I feel like the most important part of the letter is actually the part that has nothing to do with dating. It's the part where this letter writer says, um, I've spent my 20s kicking ass and taking names and lately yeah. I've been thinking it would be fun yeah. to find someone to be awesome with. Yeah. Yes. Attitude is priceless because if what you're looking for is someone to be awesome with, that could be a lover, but it could also be yeah. like, yeah, a partner in crime, a yeah. best friend, someone in between or any, all of the above. Um, yeah. And so if that's your, if that's where you're starting from, then do things that you think are awesome because then you'll find someone who is going to be awesome with you. So I love the idea of like taking a class, mm -hmm. doing something that's activity based. Um, I feel like unlike the two of you commitment folks, I <laughs> until literally this summer was single for 7,986 years. <laughs> I didn't want someone to be awesome with. I wanted to be literally left alone by everyone, except for sometimes when I was like, wow, life is so lonely and horrible and I will be alone forever and that's fine. Um, and I feel like sometimes this shit happens when you least expect it in the way you least expect. Absolutely. And so if it's something that you think is awesome anyway, then even if love doesn't come, you're continuing kicking ass and taking names and it's like you say how do you go about finding someone and I feel like you already are doing it right you find yourself mm. and be mm -hmm. the most yourself you can possibly be and then the people who experience you have the chance to be like oh this person's fucking awesome and I want to be awesome with them yes yes and you get the choice of like is that what I want in my life so I totally agree. Go online, do all the things. You know, there's also like so many outdoor things that you can do. Like mm -hmm. I um I do this thing at the cemetery near my house called grave gardening, where you sign up and there are these cradle graves and you Avery's laughing. I you love you. <laughs> <laughs> and I know <laughs> the most I do this thing outside. It's at a cemetery. <laughs> <laughs> this is why Rowan and I get along because like Laurel Hill Cemetery is one of my favorite places in the world. Yes. <laughs> we we spent like a whole afternoon talking about it. Then you can connect with the past and it's amazing. Um, but yeah, it's like uh, you get a, gar a grave and you get to plant a garden in it. And in this case, it's like plants that were indigenous to Pennsylvania in the 19th century when the graveyard was started. And so all the people oh, that's who really up cool. are like, is that really cool? Dirty, cute weirdos um, from the ages of 17 to like 85. And so you could do something like that. Or um, there are days where you can like clean up a local garden or um, like, yeah, volunteering stuff. And so I feel like finding things that are super you mean that then when you get there, you don't have to be like, what do you do for a living? What are your hobbies? Right, Instead, right. Like, what is going on with this grave? Did you know when there's a, like an anchor on top of it, it means the person came over on a ship, which I think is true. Um, anyway, so then you're like being awesome and talking about shit that you like. And then there's none of the gross small talk yeah. nightmare. And you're already starting off in a place of common interest, right? Because you're yeah. already doing something that you both enjoy. So, Yeah. Yeah. And I think Roan really hit it on the head that that whole knowing who you are, as opposed to expecting someone else to have that answer for you. Mm hmm. Is so you complete huge. me, which is really romantic in a book, but you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You, and you I, complete I mean, you. You complete, you complete <laughs> you. Somebody else makes makes it better if that person makes it better for you. But if you don't have that, I know who I am, and I'm kicking my ass. I'm kicking ass, or you're <laughs> kicking your own ass if that's your thing. Fine. Um, you know, if you don't have that though, it's really hard because you're expecting so much from another person. Yeah. That's a lot of pressure to put on a partner. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Really I also, is. can I add one more thing, which I feel like is sort of the opposite of the conventional early dating stuff that most of us, especially those of us who are like socialized as women get taught. Mm-hmm. I feel like it's one of those things where if you meet someone and you think they're cute or hot or interesting, um, you say like, how do I make the first move if they don't? I feel like the best best thing is just to be completely honest and be like, hey, I kind of am getting a little vibe between us. You seem like someone I would love to spend more time with. Would you ever want to get a coffee? Would Mm -hmm. you ever want to Zoom? Would Mm -hmm. you want to exchange phone numbers and we could like watch a movie and text during it? You're leaving it really open. Mm -hmm. It's not like making a move like in a kind of creepy way. (laughs) Yeah. 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 It's just being super honest that you're interested and your interest could look like anything. It's not like it has to necessarily be romantic. You're leaving that person an out, which anyone who's ever hitting on anyone should always do. Um, It's no pressure if they're like, oh, you know, maybe I'll just see you here again. Just in case it's not clear, that means I'm 100% not interested in you. Mm -hmm. Um, And then, you know, and it's fine. And you didn't, you didn't like lie down in a puddle in front of them <laughs> and, and like some grand gesture it's just it's super chill and you made the first move and you can even be like you're so cute want to take a walk sometime and if they say no then you're like great if I see you around I'll say hi is that okay right, just being right, super yeah. honest super clear and then if they like you and they're like yeah let's get a coffee being really honest about what you want like hey I I have just what you said I've spent my twenties kind of like doing all this awesome shit. And now I'm thinking it might be fun to have someone to do it with. What's your deal? Mm -hmm. Like it can just be so casual, but I really feel like there's all this nonsense around dating. That's like present yourself in the best possible way. Right. Right. And like have this story, like you're selling yourself, which maybe that works for some people. I don't know, but um, I find it glib and obnoxious. And I feel like honesty is the literal most attractive thing. So. Well, and it's also, that sounds exhausting. Yeah, you know, yeah. I don't know about y'all, but I'm I'm kind of done with exhausting things. Um, right. <laughs> so yeah, and I think also in that sort of in that vein, being able to sort of take that coffee date or your graveyard gardening um, as fun in itself, <laughs> and not to put like a huge expectation on it that okay, we're we're doing this, and so it's got to be this. You know, it may just be that this person just turns out to be somebody who is in your life Mm -hmm. as a friend, or, you know, there's so many different levels of, of relationships that we can have with, with people and they're all important. So yeah, definitely. Well, hopefully that answered your question. I hope you find that cinnamon roll. (laughs) Good luck. And if, if all else fails, um, you know, eat a cinnamon roll. Yeah, real cinnamon rolls are delicious. Yeah, they are. Everyone should have them <laughs> all the time. <laughs> Maybe that should be this week's recipe. It is yeah, recipe. The second I started saying it, I was like, I just gave away the recipe. No, yeah. So stay tuned to Spoiler find out alert. more about that. Yeah. All right, Zio, tell us about our second letter. Okay, our second letter is from Andy. Um, My husband and I are newlyweds, and while I'm ecstatic to spend the rest of my life with him, I keep worrying I'm not good enough and don't have what it takes to be a good Mm. spouse. What would you consider the essentials of a fulfilling and happy lifelong relationship? Oh, Andy. I know. Don't you just want to give hugs? I do. (laughs) Socially distance hugged. Socially distance hugs. Oh. We're hugging you if you can't see. Yes, (laughs) we are. And we're giving you the awe face. And Andy's um, pronouns are they, them. They, so them. Know. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Mm-hmm. I, I really feel like there are two parts to this question. If I can just dive in Go for, for it, two yeah. questions in this question. Mm-hmm. One is, uh, what are the essentials of a fulfilling and happy lifelong relationship? And then there's the bit about worrying that mm-hmm. Andy is not a good enough spouse. Mm-hmm. And I kind of feel like those two have to be answered or like responded to separately because to me, they're two really different things. And I think that like, there is a commonality between them. And the commonality is it doesn't matter what we think a happy, fulfilling, lifelong relationship is or what a good spouse is. It only matters what you and your spouse think. Right. And so I think yeah. that to answer the second part of the question, I mean, don't get me wrong. I will tell you what I think the essential <laughs> of a fulfilling and happy life. Lifelong- we <laughs> will still tell you what we'll to still do. Tell you, don't but worry. But it's not canon. Um, but <laughs> I We're just saying your mileage may vary. 
Yeah, exactly. Yes. Mileage yes. may vary, but I feel like this is such a fabulous um, question to a question starter where what I'm imagining you and your spouse could do is sit down and have this be like a prompt like because I'm an enormous nerd I'll say like a journaling prompt but you don't have to do it this way but in my <laughs> fantasy it would be like the prompt is what are the essentials of a fulfilling and happy lifelong relationship you have 15 minutes or whatever and both of you write down or type or draw or whatever what that is to you and it could be keywords that you jot down it could be like a journal entry it could be whatever you want just like some notes that are coming undiluted from each of you without the influence of the other and then you get together and you look at what both of you wrote and you see what things appear on both lists mm -hmm. and whatever those things are that appear on both lists those are like things that you both agree about that are essential mm -hmm. to a fulfilling and happy lifelong relationship and then the things that are on each of your lists that don't um that don't appear on both of them, each of you takes a minute to be like, this is why I consider this essential. And then once you know each other's, like in addition to the ones you share, that's such a great check because at every point in your relationship, you can be like, my spouse thinks that adventure is essential to a fulfilling and happily lifelong relationship. So this thing that they are looking to do seems like it's really hitting the adventure thing. And even if that's not one of my essentials, I want them to be happy and this is cool. So I'll do that. Or I want them to be happy, but this is totally not cool with me. So enjoy skydiving on your own, darling. See you when you right. get that baby. Um, you know, and like, so the, that sets you off really strongly with the ability to at any point, like uh, check in on each other's lists and be like, oh, this is why this person wants this thing because it's hitting this thing that to them is essential. Or mm -hmm. if it turns out you have really, really different lists, that's a conversation in and of itself. Like what are the things that maybe we disagree about and need to compromise on? Or what are the things that we are really, really far apart on? And maybe these are going to be the sources of conflict. So we should just be aware of it. But I think that's like a great place to start a relationship, especially as a newlywed. Yeah, I was just thinking that. A clear check-in. Mm -hmm. This is a great so point in the relationship to start that conversation because you're at the beginning and it's like, we can set up for success if we do this now. Yeah, for sure. Um, so my oldest got me watching Married at First Sight, which I had never seen before, but- Married so at First Sight? Wait, you have to explain this that. to me. All right, so it- <laughs> It is basically, it's an arranged marriage show, Okay, but okay. I thought it was going to be done basically in the super trashy reality TV ways. It's not so much. I say so much. Uh, but anyways, what was really interesting is one of the people that comes in and talks to him, he had a conversation with the newlyweds about something called naked. Um, oh, what did he call it? It was like naked emotions. Or something like that. And it's basically what you're talking about, Ron, where you come in and you are, you have a safe place to be able to have this conversation about something that's bothering you or something you want or however it may be. And I, I agree, Zio, I think that being able to have that in the beginning of a relationship is so important. I would also try to um, go ahead and, um, sorry, my little thing just popped up to give me more time. Um, but just real quick to finish the thought is that, um, you know, don't expect that your list will always stay the same. Mm -hmm. So sure. as you make this list, give yourself time and space to go back and revisit it because it changes. It changes. You will change during a, a long relationship. Your spouse will change during a long relationship. You cannot expect that 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 won't happen. That is a guarantee. That is the one thing that you can depend on for sure yeah. in, in a lifelong relationship is that you guys are going to change. So, so be willing to go revisit that. In fact, you can make it fun. It doesn't have to be a slog. You know, you can go revisit your list and say, okay, let's do it. Fire's on, whiskey in the drink, let's yeah. go. Yeah, you know? I love I love that. And I, yeah. everyone's idea of checking in every once in a while. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Like if you look at um, an anniversary thing, like every year on your anniversary or every whatever, you like do a new list and look at the old ones. And then yeah. after the, over all the years, you would have this like document of your changing relationship. That would and be really, by the way, this is really such cool. a touchy feely thing. It makes me physically uncomfortable, <laughs> but that's okay too. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay too. Um, 
And I would say my number one piece of advice for having a long relationship, um, because it, it's easy sometimes to forget it, is to treat the other person with the kindness and respect that you would a stranger, which hopefully would be a decent amount. But it's easy, especially after some time, to take somebody for granted or just to say, this is the person that I can be really snappish with because I'm in a bad mood. And I would be nicer to the, you know, the checkout person at the grocery store than I am being with the person mm. who I'm spending the rest of my life with. So always remember that, you know, treat the person with the amount of respect and care and kindness that you would a stranger. I, yeah, I agree. I think and the one piece of advice I can give for a long-term relationship <laughs> is, um, you know, it's okay to be independent. Like you're not codependent in the relationship or you shouldn't be codependent in the relationship. It's okay to have different interests. It's okay, okay to like different things. It's okay for you like 2% milk or for them to like whole milk. Like it's okay. Um, you don't have to agree on everything and like all the same things. And I think one of the things that I hear a lot from friends who are not um, attached and they lament like, oh, I can't find someone who's into so-and-so like I am. So I'm always gonna be alone. I'm like, well, you can still enjoy that thing. Like you can find other people like in the groups that you go to or the you know classes that you take that will enjoy that thing with you. And then you can share with your partner how much you enjoyed it and they can talk about something that they enjoyed and then you you know you sort of share it that way you don't have to actually be i mean you know mr x is not into this the same tv shows and stuff that i'm into but there are there's enough common ground that we can you know we enjoy a soccer match together and then i go and do my thing and he goes and you know plays his video games or whatever it is but you don't have to share like every single like and you know interest and i think that's one of the things that people think like everything matches up like lines up and it doesn't always you know. No. Yeah, I think that's so important. Yeah. Um, I would love to circle back to the first issue of Andy's letter mm -hmm. where they say, I keep worrying I'm not good enough and don't yeah. have it. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yes. And I think that that is so relatable. And I, I have honestly the same advice that I had for the second part of the letter, which is like, there is no such thing as a good spouse. It's only what you think is a good spouse and your spouse thinks is a good spouse. Mm -hmm. And like some people really care about having all these interests in common. And like Zia was saying, for some people that's not important. Um, and so like, you only need to know what you expect of your partner and what your partner expects from you, what you need from your partner and what they need yeah. from you. Yeah. And if you're concerned that you're not good enough and don't have what it takes, my question to you is, are you worried about that because you know what your spouse expects and you're having anxiety about your ability to be that? Mm -hmm. Or is it that you don't know what your spouse wants and what you're worried you can't measure up to is some sort of like um, in the ether generalizable sense of spouseness that's like from a spouseness. I love on. that. <laughs> no. Um, that's because why I think you're as many ways to be a spouse as there are couples in the oh, world. Sure. And it only matters what you and your spouse need. From That's why your idea of making a list or having that conversation in the beginning to establish those expectations, mm -hmm. I think, you know, covers that. It's like, what, this is what I would like to see us do. And this is what I'd like you to be for me. And then what do you need me to be for you? Like, I think that's an important conversation to have. And then it, it'll get rid of at least hopefully some of, or if not all of that anxiety of whether or not you know yeah you have what it takes yeah. but I well, mean and they I, wouldn't have married you if they didn't think yes. you were I mean you're newlyweds like you you're they, pretty awesome yeah you're it, awesome so you're awesome you're, you're already, already in a you're good awesome, spot. So, yeah um yeah and I mean again you have to give yourself the space to not be perfect mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and you have to give your spouse the space not to be perfect. You know, you're not your spouse is everything and your spouse is not your everything. Mm -hmm. Have that independence still. And, because otherwise, not only is that expecting way a lot from your spouse, but it is also um, what am, what's the word? It, you're moving off things that are your responsibility onto somebody else's shoulder. Mm -hmm. right? You know, your happiness pressure. is your responsibility. It really is. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And if you think if what's happening is that 
it's a persistent issue in your life that you think you're not good enough. So this isn't really about spouseness. It's about Mm -hmm. like, if you're a teacher, you think you're not a good enough teacher. When you're a friend, you feel like you're not a good enough friend. When you're writing, you think you're not a good enough writer. Um, I would say talk to a therapist Mm -hmm. because it sounds like Mm -hmm. you have some low self-esteem, some issues of confidence, some issues of anxiety. And those are so relatable, so Mm -hmm. normal. And also Mm -hmm. like could really, really be helped by talking through some getting some kind of reality checks from somebody outside your own brain Mm -hmm. amen a thousand times yeah Yeah. (laughs) absolutely oh but congratulations oh yeah Yeah, congratulations congratulations. (laughs) (laughs) yeah yeah Zio, what's the theme for our playlist this week? Oh, this week it's looking for love. How apropos is that? <laughs> love it. Uh, there's some great stuff on there too. I've got, let's see, we've got the Supremes on there. You can't hurry love. I've got Death Cab for Cutie. We've got some Whitney Houston, some Beck, some Sade, Amy Winehouse, Keith Urban. I mean, it's, there's like, I went a little crazy on this one. This one's got about 43 songs on it. <laughs> yeah, oh. a little wild on there, but um, okay, yeah. Looking for love takes a long time. Yeah. yeah, there you yeah, go. For sure. And when you got it, you, you've got a lot of kitchen dancing you need to. Do. <laughs> uh, so where can our folks find this? Uh, we, will, we, will, we will put the link in the comments below. Um, and also um, on our website, there's a link for our Spotify account. Yeah. So we'll good. We're good. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yay. <laughs> well, as always, I am hungry. I know. And I'm um, I know. So what is our recipe of the episode, Rona? I think we might have an idea. Could it possibly be? Yeah, um, I may or may not have 100% given it away earlier, uh, but our recipe for this week is cinnamon rolls, um, inspired by our first letter, first letter writer. Um, y'all, I fucking love cinnamon rolls. Mm, Delicious. I want one right now. I haven't had one in yeah. forever, actually. Oh my gosh, they're so good. And our recipe this week, um, the recipe for cinnamon rolls this week is a kind of, it's a classic cinnamon roll, um, but I have put in the recipe wait, a couple ways to change it up. So I did one variation that is a, a pumpkin spice cinnamon roll oh for all of you ESL lovers. This is there. cruel, cruel I know, torture. I have to tell you, you guys, I had my first pumpkin spice latte this year. Um, obviously <laughs> was it life changing? I still um, haven't had one. <laughs> it was pretty good. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Okay. It was pretty good. Maybe um, I'll make one. Yeah. So I did a pumpkin spice latte variation and I did a, like a praline variation. Oh my gosh. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'll be right there. Live your yeah. life. Yeah. I, no, will, I will like put on a hazmat suit and just come to your door. Well, Zio, you live close enough by that. If you're very, very nice to me, maybe I will drop off some cinnamon rolls at your front door. I'm making hard eyes mm-hmm. at Rowan right now. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm crying. <laughs> I know. I'm so sorry, Avery. It's you just too gotta, mean. You just got to come a little closer. Each episode, we will be sharing some recommendations. Uh, so, Zio and Ron, why don't you guys start us off? What are you binging, reading, listening to, or doing a lot of lately? Go for it, Ron. <laughs> Um, I know I'm late to the game, but I just watched uh, Euphoria for the first time. (gasps) Oh, I haven't done that yet. I've only watched like three episodes and I had to go, I had to wait to binge the whole thing because yeah, yeah, it's It's amazing. I have to ask a ridiculous question because I'm 8,000 years old, but how is, is, um, is it Zendaya or Zendaya? I honestly don't know. I think it's Zendaya, but I'm not sure. Okay. I'm from Nebraska. You don't want to ask me how to pronounce it. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Um, I I literally Googled it and it had both pronunciations. Um, Anyway, Zendaya is fabulous and amazing. Um, The actor who plays Jules, um, who is a trans in the show, trans woman in the show, it's her first acting role, I think, um, which I was just blown away. Wow. All the acting is amazing. There's this character called Fez who is just like a darling, darling delight. Um, And the way the show is shot, I think is really amazing. It's like very dreamy and vaguely drug addled, which is kind of Mm -hmm. the theme of the show. Mm -hmm. Um, But it it does it in a way that is like not music video-y at all. It actually feels really like being inside a teenage relationship, which like, okay, it's been a while, but I mean, I do remember. (laughs) Um, It's fucking amazing. Wow. It's so good. 
yeah and they have those the extras that they did over the went over the yeah yeah so, i just watched I those two 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 episodes that were shot during pandemic um one with uh each of the the main characters and one other actor and so it's this kind of like the first one is a conversation between zendaya and her sponsor from from um uh, narcotics anonymous in a diner and then the second one is jules and her therapist and it's like two actors just a script just one location which is kind of my favorite kind of drama oh, because it, it rests entirely on the writing and the characterization and the performances are just amazing she's got yeah. a new movie out i can't think of the name of it marie um, and malcolm or yeah. malcolm and marie malcolm, malcolm and yeah. marie it's yeah which is like same director yeah yeah did euphoria writer director who did euphoria um yeah. and i'm ex- i'm really excited it to looks see amazing. She amazing yeah she's incredible and she can sing too yeah she's got she, she did, I didn't yeah know she that. sings she sings on some of the tracks on the euphoria soundtrack yeah she's oh, wow. the soundtrack ps is yeah outrageously good <laughs> that's what got me into the show initially yeah. once i saw the soundtrack yeah. it's just like bangers all the way through it seriously so yeah yeah i love that well, my the show I just finished um, is a completely different <laughs> shade. Um, it's a Norwegian show that they did over the holidays called um, Home for Christmas, Yem Til Jul. And the first season, the second season was this year or this past year. There's only six episodes in, in each season, but it is so, it's funny, it's quirky. It's very, very Norwegian. Um, it's also dubbed in English. So you can um, listen to it in English or read subtitles either way. But it's, um, you know, it's like the single person's nightmare Christmas scenario with their family put on speed, <laughs> you know what I mean? But it's so heartwarming and sweet and loving. And she's got such a great family and, and friends and around her. Um, so if you're looking for something that's like laugh out loud, funny and hilarious, but also really sweet at the same time, um, you can check that out on Netflix. Okay, and then I'll bring us down, way down. <laughs> um, I am actually still in the process of watching it. I think I've got like 15 minutes left. I'm watching the new Britney Spears documentary from the New York Times. It's on Hulu. Um, It is just really, quite frankly, kind of heartbreaking um, because I remember going through it and actually, you know, inhaling every little bit of Britney news as Mm -hmm. she completely lost it and shaved her head and did all that stuff. And it is so different to watch it now with a different mm-hmm. perspective mm-hmm. um and so yeah it's it's pretty heartbreaking um it's mm-hmm. not quite on the it's not on the same level as like the amy winehouse documentary mm-hmm. that was devastating yeah um uh, that was just well that girl had no one in her on her yeah. side yeah. um but this is really interesting and it and it sort of it gives you a good perspective on how we as society start to can change our perspective on how we think how mm-hmm. we how we appreciate things and how we perceive things i think if the same thing were to be happening right now it would be taken in a completely different mm-hmm. way mm-hmm. than how we did at the time which was basically pull the popcorn this is total entertainment she's losing mm-hmm. it you know and it was just very cruel yeah quite yeah. frankly um yeah. and i have to do a music one because i am not a music person um and <laughs> so this was recommended to me by um apple music and it was arlo Pol- arlo parks and it's called yeah, collapsed in sunbeams it's yeah. so good you guys this is like bathtub music is what i would call it you know because yeah. you literally yeah. will just sit in the hot tub and just listen to it and it's really in nice tub. in the hot tub <laughs> my tubs are very hot always and um it has a great line in there um many but one of the ones that i pulled out was i'd lick the grief off your lips mm-hmm. and that is the opening line of a song and that is just yeah i think so. i had the one i had arlo parks on new music friday a couple of weeks ago and i was just like oh man this is going to be so big by summer this is going to be so big <laughs> cannot wait yeah it's 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 a nice chill vibe um i really liked it i guess it's her debut as mm-hmm. well which i yeah. did not realize yeah awesome. there's a lot of great new music coming out right now i'm excited thank you so much for listening what did you think did we get it right totally got it wrong let us know and remember to follow us on social media 
Subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts and YouTube and tell your friends to do the same. Plus, be sure to subscribe to our newsletter at DearRomanceWriter.com for all the latest and to get access to special Patreon-only content. As always, keep sending in those letters at DearRomanceWriter.com. You have questions, we have questionable answers. See you next time.